Hello ladies and gentlemen and happy IPA day. I've been looking forward to this day for a very long time. It is an excuse to drink some very, very good beers. So I was looking around all over the joint. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I went on a, a shopping spree to try and find some big bad IPAs to try out. Um, I completely failed and I came up with a Nonya Ur, uh, Dark Horizon, a couple of the Brass Castle uh, Porters and uh, I think I got um, a Goose Island Pepe, what do you call it, anyway. So I went out looking for IPAs and I came back with with, uh, with porters and stouts because that's, that's just how I roll. So I was looking at what I have in the fridges, what, what I've got in my little beer cellar, um, also known as the garage, um, and I was thinking, well, what can I try? What what can I do on IPA day? This is the perfect perfect time to have tried something like, say, Ruination, which I've already reviewed, go check it out. Um, and I missed the opportunity to do that. So I was looking and my eyes fell upon this bottle and I was going to save it perhaps for the 100th uh, review but instead I thought, no, I'm going to crack it out on IPA day. I'm going to crack it out on IPA day because I think it's important too. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Anchorage Brewing Company's Bitter Monk. Um, this is subscribed as a Belgian style double IPA uh, with Brettanum uh and it's aged in French oak Chardonnay barrels. So you probably notice from what I've been saying that this is a rather special beer. It inhabits about 20 different stylistic ranges. It is primarily a double IPA, so you've got uh, 9% and 100 IBUs in this bottle. But on top of that, it is also fermented with Belgian yeast. I would assume by what it's saying with Belgian style. It is also then barrel aged in oak Chardonnay barrels, so it's going to have character from Chardonnay barrels. It's going to have oaky tendencies, it's going to have those white wine and vinous qualities to it and then it also has bread in it so it's going to be funky and it's going to have lemon and, and leather and horse blanket and mustiness to it so this just categorises everything that I love about what's happening with beer at the moment you can you can do this, you, you, somehow, somehow you can do this, you can experiment doing this sort of thing and come out with a beer like like this, that is held in such high reserves. Um, just notice on the side, actually, I didn't even read this. Uh, this is brewed with Apollo and Citra, uh, dry hops in the barrel with Citra again. Uh, triple fermented, first in French oak, uh, f I guess that's a load of food with the Belgian yeast, uh, second in French oak Chardonnay barrels with Brett, and finally in the bottle with a third yeast for natural carbonation. Um, having said that, I just tipped it sideways and all the yeast has gone flying around the bowl. So it's going to take me absolutely ages to get this. Um, to get this little uh, champagne cork out, so just give me a second. Well, hey, there we go. So it wasn't actually that hard, it was ready to burst. I've literally pretty much just took the cap off and it, it just pops, and you can see how much smoke's coming off it. Um, speaking of which, let's show you that. Um, this bottle is one from 2000, June 2012. I'm looking, I saw it a second ago, I must know. Yeah, uh, yes, sorry, yeah, June 2012. Um, so it's about, uh, this is a year old now, so it might have mellowed out a little bit in terms of hot flavours, but I would love to see what it's like. Um, I always find that these, oh, look at that, it's bubbling away, fizzling away. So I'll pour it out while we're talking. Um, I'd love to see what it's like in. Um, after a bit of aging, I always find that these these sort of beers tend to get better with age. Wow! Yeah, Carbonation City to start. Can you see how fast and furious that is going on inside the glass? It's a beautiful colour. Now, considering I just shook it around a little bit, it's managed to not get much in the way of sediment in it. It's remarkably clear. Just a tiny, tiny little bit hazy, perhaps. Tiny bit of something going on in there. There's a wonderful three-finger head on the top of it. It's holy and frothy and uneven as heck as you'd expect with a blend of three different yeast doing three different things. So I should say, triple fermented rather than yeast, but it's uh, technically... Technically, I think it's a bacteria, is it a wild yeast? Anyway, who knows? I can smell it. Um, <laughs> it's really pungent smell coming through. But in terms of looks, I mean, that that's a, it's just a tiny bit like what I call a, 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 a double or an imperial IPA colour. So it's more like a normal IPA in colour, but I mean, it's still 9%, still strong as anything. So let's get a nose on it. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the bread's coming through in, in waves, like lemony, um, Kind of musty and funky and a leathery smells like like I was saying earlier those those that are coming through in abundance and the aroma 
but I can also smell white wine, the kind of vinous white wine flavours, um, and oakiness, a uh, sweet kind of wood smell coming through it as well. And it, it's, it's unbelievably complex, it's spicy too actually, there's a little bit of burn at the back of the nose from some of the f um, smells coming off it. So, uh, you know, this, this smells absolutely glorious, it's, it's again, the, the style is so here, there and everywhere, um, and bringing it all together in one glass, the, the smell is, is so complex and, and out there. Uh, I'll just top up the glass a little bit, see if I can't get a bit of, uh, I'll just give it a glug. See if I can't get some sediment in. I do. I like. I like yeast in my beers. I. I don't mind beers being unfined and unfiltered. I, I like the character that uh, yeasts and um, impart on the beers. So we're right, less waffling. Um, let's get in there. And let's give it a taste. So cheers, guys. Happy IPA day. I hope you have a fantastic beer in your hands right now. Cheers. Oh wow. <laughs> Oh, I like this one. Oh, I like this one a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink more. Oh, it's so hard to categorise. There is layer upon layer upon layer of flavour going on with this. It's hitting you every few seconds. There's like a new flavour flavour develops and just washes across the palate. I'm getting, I'm getting booze up the nose, but at the same time, I'm getting white wine. Uh, I, it's oaky. Um, I, I I have I play the drums and um, one of the drum kits I used to own was an oak drum kit and it just smells like I like I've taken the the skins off the drums and I've just put my head inside that wonderful oak smell. It's coming through right at the back of my nose along with like a, a burst a kick of the alcohol. And there's a ton of of like elderflower with flowery hoppy flavors and they're really punchy. Everything. Uh, you know, including with the Belgian yeast that'll be estery and we'll be bringing in those kind of fruity flavours. Uh, they, they are there in a massive amount of abundance as well. Uh, right through the nose and across the palate, right right around the back of the palate. And then I get like a spiciness that kind of comes as an after an after wave and that spice then develops into a, a really wonderfully counterbalanced bitterness it is definitely hugely bitter because you don't even taste it until right near the end but it just comes in a massive waft and then suddenly you, your whole palate starts to dry out and it lingers it's just lingering really strong uh, quite aggressive bitterness but you can tell it's really well balanced in that regard as well because the flavour, and I might, I might, I might add, the flavour is just is balls to the wall. Every single flavour I'm describing is there in such abundance and in so and so vigorous that you couldn't miss it. And I'm sure there's so much more complexity to this to this beer, um, but I'm just washing over because these flavours are, are just obliter obliterating my palate. Um, but you don't taste that bitterness at all right at the beginning. The sweetness of the beer, that oak flavour, the floral notes from the yeast and from the from the hops, uh, they dominate and then the bitterness comes in and it just kind of lingers on the palate and just reminds you of what you've drunk. And I can still, little tidbits of taste of, especially of the oak, still, still mashing around the palate and spiciness too, a little bit of spiciness. Um, that again, kind of just reminds you and just makes me want to take another sip, which I shall do. But oh man, what a beer, what a beer. I'm trying to pinpoint it. It's something, elderflower is the closest I can come to to describe it. That kind of floral, the taste of flowers. I think the only other thing I could ever ever describe it is, is, is kind of the edible flowers that you, that you see around. Um, fortunately for me, I went out for a rather nice meal the other night and there was some edible flowers on on, the, on a salad and kind of pepperiness from Rocket and then they the, had these flowers and I don't know what they are but edible petals and it's that kind of floral fruitiness um, that's coming through it, you know, um, I guess you could eat, go out, go to your nearest field and eat some flowers and maybe get a taste but it, it's, uh, that just doesn't even do it justice to what flavours are coming through uh, it's absolutely spiffingly wonderful as you can probably tell it is it's <laughs> too drinkable because I've almost drunk 
more than half a glass of it and I topped myself up a bit more as well. Um, yeah, I think I could drink the entire 750 milliliter bottle without a care in the world and end up extremely drunk and extremely happy. Uh, this just, I mean, this is a bit that just goes to show you how much variety it is in the in the world of craft beer and how much effort and passion is put in by some people, by everyone. I mean, it's not fair to say that those that someone puts in more passion than someone else, but um, this just goes to show you how much expedition there is going to, into flavours and how people aren't worried about trying and going there. Um, it's wonderful, <laughs> it really is. And every flavour is so balanced. Because you can get the you get the bread character like in a funk beer, like in an open fermentation beer, you get that funkiness. But you don't lose the hop character and you don't lose the bitterness. So what in effect what's happened is everything's come together and blended. So all of those styles, the, the best part from those styles has suddenly somehow come together and has worked. So you've got the barrel aged flavours from you know that usually dominate in, in many other styles. You barrel age your beer and predominant flavours come through as that and then especially with stouts you get a, a deep coffee and chocolatey flavour and then the flavour of of the whiskey barrel you've aged it in or wherever it is. Um, this one it becomes a blend of everything. The hot flavours come some come through so perfectly um, that the that the brett can come th through so perfectly that the barrel can come through so perfectly and that it's it's sufficiently malty and sweet enough to be able to carry it all together without tasting being too overpowering or or letting those flavours develop too much and keeping them all in check is just testament to how good this damn brewery is this is absolutely flipping gorgeous so there we are IPA day and I've gone with a beer that couldn't that can be described possibly as an IPA but it's probably best described as a class all of its own and I'm very happy that I chose it I didn't wait an extra day longer to give it a shot um, so I mean tell me what you think if you've ever tried anything by Anchorage before or in particular if you tried if you tried the Bitter Monk I mean look at the artwork as well it's etched onto the side of the bottle it's not a label um, this bottle's definitely a keeper this one's staying with me forever in a day I think it's going to go on a nice wall somewhere um, Tell me what you think you've ever tried it before, if you've ever tried anything by Anchorage or anything in style. Tell me if you've done a homebrew like it. I want to know. I want to know all about it. And uh, leave, leave a comment. Uh, so, like, favourite, uh, subscribe to the videos. Um, I'm going to be very happy to sit here and drink now. And happy, happy day. Happy A day to everyone. Cheers. Alright, so my euphoric haze, um, I may have forgotten to actually give this one a review. So, stick around and we should finish the beer. Oh, that mouthful is just as good as the first one I took. Um, now, I make it a steadfast rule that I never give anything a perfect 10 out of 10 because I, I, I probably will never find the perfect beer and no beer can be perfect to my eyes. There can always be improvement, surely there can always be improvement. Um, but I'm going to break my judge everything by nines and nine point fives and you know point five of a of a market. This one's going to be a, this one's going to be nine point seven five on 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 the Richter scale. This one is absolutely stonkingly brilliant. It's probably one of the best beers that I have ever tasted. Ever the complexity, the cross stylistic flavors that blend so perfectly well with each other. Um, it's it's absolutely amazing. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you can ever get your hands on a bottle of this, try it. Um, my next task for life is going to be getting a bottle of this or a bottle of an Anchorage Brewing Company beer and then trying to age it for a couple of years. So this one's a year old, but I, I I'm going to get another one and, and leave it. Just cellar it and leave it for as long as I physically can and see how that changes the um, changes the flavours in the beer. So they are nine point seven five. And uh, like I said before, favourite, comment, subscribe, um, all of the above. And I'll see you again on the next Bear Review. Thank you.